Let's talk, let's talk about, about sex, sex, baby. Let's talk about, not well, not you and me. Let's talk, <laughs> about, let's talk about sex education. Welcome to this ability clinic where sex education is part of a healthy lifestyle. I'm your host, Dr. Van. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a young Vietnamese female with long black hair tied up in a bun. And I'm wearing a cream colored blouse sitting in front of a blank white background. If you haven't seen sex education on Netflix, you're behind the times. Oi. Sex education deals with taboo topics in a way that helps so many people feel seen, validated, and represented. Every episode and every character arc will make you laugh out loud and remind you that we shouldn't be ashamed of the things we can't change about ourselves. Everyone has bodies, right? There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's so many reasons to watch sex education. One of them being that there's a recurring character who is disabled. Today, we're gonna to focus on a particular character named Isaac, who can be described as a wheelchair user, mouth painter, and a bit of a sassy jerk. Spoiler warning for season two of Sex Education. Joining me today is recurring guest and co-producer of the show, Ajani AJ Murray. Welcome back to the show, AJ. Hi, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm, I'm in a power wheelchair. I am African-American of darker skin complexion. I'm in my office, and it's just a plain old white background, and I have on a gray, like, short sleeve dressy kind of shirt. I absolutely love this show. I love season two. I think the character of Isaac is is incredible. A very complex, a little bit dark character. Speaking of complex and a little bit dark, joining me today is mouth painter and self-proclaimed sex symbol, Cruz Bogle. Welcome to the show, Cruz. Happy to be here. <laughs> Cruz is a young Caucasian dude with short brown hair and a beard, wearing stylishly nerdy glasses and a fresh white tee. He's sitting in a power wheelchair with a sip and puff attachment backed by a simple, tidy bedroom. How do you usually introduce yourself when you meet new people? Uh, so for the most part, I keep it pretty simple. Uh, hey, my name's Cruz. Uh, you know, if there's a little bit of hesitation or I can tell there's a little elephant in the room because of my wheelchair or disability, then perhaps I'll address that. My disability, that's why I'm on here to be able to give a little bit better insight into Isaac's character because he also has a similar disability. So I first heard about Cruz through Instagram. I saw a lot of his art because he is a very talented mouth painter. And I've been following him for a while now, seeing that there's a character who is a wheelchair user who also happens to be a mouth painter. I figured I'd reach out to Cruz and get his take. Yeah, so I'm here to give the old Cruzy baby critique. Let's go! <laughs> We first meet Isaac and his brother Joe as they're moving into a trailer across from Maeve. Hi. Do you need some help? Well, I didn't ask for any, so no. <laughs> right off the bat, like, Isaac is very snarky. You know, even though she was being very nice, I think he was ranting his frustration that because I'm disabled, I automatically need help. It shows you that, oh yeah, just because he's in a wheelchair like doesn't mean he needs your help or is like super kind and like a super sweet person. Like everybody still has kind of their shit going on. Was he harsh and he was a little bit of a butthole for saying it that way? Well, I didn't ask for any, so no. <laughs> yes. Um, yes but... He was such a jerk. The show is immediately breaking that stereotype of, oh, disabled people are like really grateful and just angels. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we're neighbors. I'm Joe. That ungrateful gets Isaac. I'm Maeve. I don't like noise. Okay. The next time Maeve sees Isaac, it's her birthday, but her neighbor Cynthia is a bit oblivious. Maeve. Yeah. You know what today is, don't you? Rent day. Cynthia and Maeve see Isaac oh. across the way in his wheelchair, going down his front entrance ramp. Such a sweet boy. She goes, oh, what a sweet boy, but this boy that you called is a man, and he's not that sweet, you know? <laughs> exactly. Again, just the, the preconceived notion of like, oh, he's in a wheelchair, like the sympathy is there. He must be so sweet. Bless his heart. Look at him, he's still living. <laughs> Apparently, it was a terrible incident. He was attacked by a gang of youths. Shouldn't be so nosy, Cynthia. As we get to know Isaac, <laughs> we realize that he just tells people random made up stories about his injury. So I think this is evidence that he was just messing with Cynthia. 
people have said similar things to me like do you ever like make up lies and like juice up the story a bit it's just a fun little mind game you could tell somebody anything and they will probably believe it kind of comes back to again like oh he's so sweet he wouldn't lie he was attacked by a gang of youths should be so nosy cynthia yeah, like she fell for it <laughs> yeah got her <laughs> me personally i don't necessarily take this approach but there are people out there with disabilities and they take the stance i don't have to tell you what my disability is, I don't have to tell you the story. Now it's late at night and Maeve hears some commotion outside her trailer. She sees someone stealing her neighbor's gas canister, something that she's done in the past. So she tries to do the right thing and catch them in the act. What in the name of God is going on? I asked him to help. I saw someone stealing your gas canister, so I came over. I'm so sorry, Cynthia. I was just so cold disability is yet again so tragic oh love don't you dare apologize there's a spare canister there you can have that help him jeffrey she felt really really bad and empathetic that he was cold oh you're doing something wrong and like breaking the law and actually stealing from me but like oh don't worry about it it's okay and you should be ashamed yourself he knows that cynthia feels good for helping him steal yes. her own gas he just playing her like a like a fine and skilled musician like um yeah <laughs> people just don't think that people with disabilities are even capable mm -hmm. of of doing something dark or, or evil i guess that's part of their their plan is make you aware of the ableism so quickly and then just shoot it down and like break the stereotype for you so you don't even have to like think about it too much I love I love that you can tell Maeve like kind of likes it. <laughs> yeah. And he it's just like really flirty. He's like raising his eyebrows and like telling her to get out of here and there's some chemistry. Playful. Yeah, playful, exactly. Yeah, it gives his characters a lot of depth as opposed to like you said just being kind of the this guy in the wheelchair who just has this brief moment in the show. You want to know more about him. Here we see Isaac getting ready for the day. His brother Joe is helping him brush his teeth while he looks out the window and sees Maeve leaving her trailer with her mom and baby sister. Can you get in there, please? Oh, I see. After Isaac is pleased yeah. with his hair, yeah. Yeah. Joe playfully tousles it and messes it up again. Oh, yeah, it's fine. It's nice. They, sh you know, they show that he is a little dependent. You know, he needs his teeth brushed. It also opens you up to to him a little more. All right, he does need some help. Yeah, he's a dick, but like he probably is just covering up some insecurities and vulnerabilities because he does need help. This normalizes disability and our everyday lives. Why do you always double knock? I don't want you running off, do I? <laughs> You're funny. I like that scene there because since my accident, so the last like 12, 13 years, I've been lucky enough to have a decent amount of friends actually like work for me as my quote unquote caregiver, I guess. It's nice to have a friend as opposed to like somebody random helping you. But after a while, whether it's stress or they just like the relationship starts to change, the dynamics are changing. Like, even though it's my shoes, they're still going to do things the way they want to. Like, I hate when you tie a double knot in my shoes. Like, can you just do a single one? And they'll just be like, nah, like, that's just what I do. Like, <laughs> suck it up. Too bad. I'm like, damn, like now I have to go the rest of the day. People are going to look at my shoes and think that I like double knots when <laughs> it was just he wanted to tie double knots for me. And, you know. You get what I'm saying? I'm laughing here, but Cruz is delicately talking about how frustrating it can be when you've got a disability and are in a position where you have to direct your own care. If a random person who's a professional is helping you, the dynamic can be very transactional and impersonal. But if that person is also your friend, there's an additional layer of discomfort if they aren't following your direction and they are just doing whatever they want. Disregarding someone's direction about their own care devalues their independence. We're talking about shoelaces here, but it's harmful to shrug this off as no big deal. 
Imagine if you needed help with something really intimate, like your underwear, and you preferred it a certain way, but the person helping you just ignored that and did what they wanted. This happens too often, and it's dehumanizing. And it's hard to speak out against it because no one wants to offend a caregiver they rely on for help. As I've uh, moved through my life and my disability, it's like you got to learn to be yourself regardless of what you think other people think of you. I always used to be just this kind of toxic positivity person and wouldn't honor my feelings and my emotions. So, I mean, for, for Isaac, he's, he's comfortable in who he is, that's for sure. Sex education quickly breaks down some common stereotypes about disability. But Isaac isn't just like everyone else. He's actually a disabled sex symbol. In our next breakdown, Isaac goes from cheeky neighbor to legitimate love interest. If you think Isaac's a bit of a looker, hit the like button and subscribe to this Ability Clinic for more accessible sex education. Thank you for watching, listening, and learning. Maybe, I mean, if you want to throw in something like, I don't know, self-proclaimed sex symbol so they don't, viewers don't just think like, oh, wow. Yeah, like, like <laughs> looking you up on Pornhub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, hey, I'd be honored if they did, but. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll make it a little more humble then. Okay, so joining me today is mouth painter and self proclaimed Take two. <laughs> Take two. Love the bloopers. <laughs>